Hi there, and today we are recording episode 15. It's end of June. Uh, we are about a week late for our monthly episode because we've been traveling, working on different projects, real estate, franchising, been pretty, pretty hectic, busy summer. And we're heading to Lithuania in a couple of weeks as well. So we had to make this episode today. And we're actually going to chat about continuing education, self-development in your expertise fields. For us, for example, would be, um, I went to a franchise expo in New York City, end of May, and then mid-June, I was in Orlando Franchising Expo, and then I was at Grand Cordon's Marketing and the Sales Workshops. So I definitely had a lot of continuing education happening. And Nicholas, he's, you, you were going to IT conferences a couple times this year and continuing education courses, right? Yep, a lot of webinars, um, in-person conferences, uh, masterminds, um, but also some just local local events as well. Yes, local networking events mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and um, actually one of the benefits, like some people wonder, like is it worth spending the money and time to go into these events, like? Maybe I would rather sit home and relax and just read on my computer or something. But it's a whole different energy and inspiration and vibe and networking opportunities in person actually when you go in person as opposed to when remotely, like even remote workshops is not like the same connection building, networking building as you meet someone you hand shake you know their hand mm -hmm. right yep and you know what i found at conferences um everyone is there for relatively the same reason right you know if it's an it conference everyone is there because they're involved in it for some reason or another they might be a technician they might be a c-level executive um, but it's easy to strike up a conversation when you're at, at conferences because you can pretty much just talk about what the conference is about, right? So if it's an IT conference, if it's security, you can say, hey, like, it, it, hey, do you guys hear the news about this? Or I was just reading this. Um, the other thing that I wanted to touch on that Yolita just kind of talked about was that you have access to a lot of people in various levels of the industry. And what I mean by that is, uh, one example kind of shakes out in my mind is when I went to an HPE conference um, about uh, technology, but th the crux of it was you can talk to people that are, you know, technicians like you or engineers, but also you have access to the people actually making the product as well. It could be over, hey, like, you know, hey, you want to get something to, to eat? You want to just walk around? Hey, can we chit chat for a few minutes, grab a coffee? But getting that access to people that directly um, work at the company that you're, that you're networking about or just getting um, access to peers as well is huge. Yes, and different caliber people, what I found as well, but also people that are passionate about their industry, their job, their profession. Yeah. What I found when I went to the expos, whether in New York City, one, the International Franchise Expo, or the one in Orlando, the National Franchise Show, they, there's two different companies that put them together. Um, everyone there was so supportive and helpful and willing to share insider info and secrets and strategies, how they've been able to grow their business and some of them you know they're in different industries like home services wellness or that might be like child care or food but still business is business and you know some strategies you share across these industries and everyone is so friendly just go so just investing time that paying for that plane ticket and the hotel or airbnb i find every time i did that i left 
with so much more, so much more than what it cost me to go there. And conferences are really what you make of them, right? So if you go and you just kind of do your own thing and don't really network, yeah. and, you know, I mean, that's, that's good. You'll, you'll still learn things and you'll still get some new ideas. But, you know, I always say conferences, the more you put into it, the more you're going to get out of it. Have kind of a game plan, a loose game plan of what you want to accomplish to expand your knowledge. But then try to make some connections maybe ahead of time. So then if you are someone that's a little bit, oh, well, who am I going to talk to? I don't know what to say. You know, maybe you can get some of those icebreakers done ahead of time. If you're going, um, if a, a vendor of yours recommended, hey, go to this conference or, you know, ask them, hey, is there other customers that you have that are maybe in a similar vertical to me? Just because someone's not in the same vertical doesn't mean that they don't have things to, to share. And one of the best things about traveling or going to conferences is getting a, a perspective from someone else as well. And one thing I learned at everyone on LinkedIn that you meet yeah. at these conferences because chances are they are on LinkedIn. Like LinkedIn is like the Facebook of business, mm -hmm. like professionals. Yep. Um, a lot of people give you their card. They give you their, their card. It's good to keep their contact info from like personal. They have their phone, email, the card. And I usually try to take pictures of the one that I really want to keep because sometimes we lose these paper cards but then I also find their name on LinkedIn and I even tell them hey can I let's let's add each other on LinkedIn yeah. then then that way you're actually able to build community so even after you come back from the conference you know you're able to have um, friends and people that share the same interests and then if you're trying to grow your presence at this like professional network if you try to sell something even it's gonna grow that um, net that expand that network of people that could expose your product to new audiences and then people can share it with their friends um, so it's definitely um, great for networking like that. One thing that I want to mention is if you do get cards from people, is a, a little hack that I've done for years because business cards have obviously have been around before LinkedIn. Is on the back of their of their card, take a couple notes. Like if you were like, oh hey, let's you know do a collab or let's do a Zoom about X, Y, and Z. Just write that on the back of the card. If you're there as a vendor and you're prospecting for leads and you get a card from someone, you know, write down some of their personal information. And what I mean by personal information is like, you know, if you meet, say, um, you know, a CEO and he's like, oh, hey, you know, um, you know, my wife does this or we're going on vacation or whatever. Just write down those little tidbits on the back of their card or on a note somewhere. And that way, when you do reach out to that sales prospect, in the future, you can say, hey, like, hey, did you guys take that trip yet overseas? Did you guys, you know, hey, what's, you know, what's your wife, uh, you, you know, a CEO that I met a while ago, his wife's name was Tina. And I was like, oh, hey, like, you know, what's Tina up to these days? You know, I know that she was talking about getting into whatever, you know, it gives that personal connection, but it also helps you when you have 20 business cards and you're like, right. uh, this Who guy, is this person? Kevin, yeah. he's some, uh, some sort of sales guy, like, you can write on the back, like, you know, we, you know, met at dinner, or we met here or, or whatever, you know, yeah. we were going to talk about uh, trading knowledge or something like that. Yeah. And then the other benefit going to these conferences is workshops. They, they often have speakers like industry professionals, mm -hmm. and they might de be delivering updates on like law, let's say new cybersecurity law or new franchising law or new... Uh, technology like AI how is AI used like in this print or food industry or massage or skincare uh, so so there is great ways to build knowledge on latest um, additions in you know inventions so to speak and see where the different industries are moving legislature um, you could even sometimes there's demos of like different things products that you can try 
like if you go to like a skincare beauty expo, you know, they'll have a bunch of new different products, technologies that you m might want to try, like machines, laser machines, or, you know, facial masks, products. Yep, and I always say don't, don't be afraid to ask questions, and maybe some of those questions might be hard questions to a vendor's. And where I'm going with that is if you're looking at a, a piece of technology or a new, new payment gateway or new hardware or whatever it is, ask. Be like, hey, so, so what's the deal? Like, I've been using this. Or, and you might be able to get access to, um, you know, a Insider, product manager. Yeah. Maybe they'll give you a little bit of tidbits of what's coming down the roadmap. And I remember one conference that I was at, and they were kind of doing like a, a, a fireside chat, so to speak. And the person that was the moderator clearly didn't really understand some of the people that were um, presenting. And what the, the moderator said to someone, you know, well, that's a pretty bold statement about the product that you're making. Like, you know, how, how do you know that? Like, you know, what's your like street cred? And he kind of took a step back and lean back in his chair and he's like well i am the principal software architect for this piece of software and i have been for about the last eight years so i think i know what i'm talking about when it comes to this piece of software yeah or even you might we meet vendors that you already use their products for example we use my time scheduler and point of sale platform and i was able to meet the founder and build personal relationship with the founder and also their leading like software engineer um so now i you know i can uh, they know me they met me they know i'm their client i mean they knew me before right but only we spoke on the phone when there was certain like implementation that we were doing or things like that but you know when you put the face to a person it's, it takes your relationship kind of to the next level um that's what like most vendors or like I met uh, certain brokers that's you know we will be working with for our franchise or software platforms like bizsold.com we're going to be on that platform their lead generation platform so it's different if I just went online and registered for their service but actually meeting their staff that's like onboarding me and doing the our page for us you know like they know they met me in person I met them in person there's like another level of trust and support between yep. yeah and if it's a vendor that you currently have a relationship with or you're thinking that you might have a relationship with getting contact information for you know a lot of people are like oh, I don't want to go to a conference it's gonna be this sales oh, push. Boring. it's just yeah. you know they're gonna to try to be selling me this and that and and yes that's probably true. Yeah. But one thing that I say is, you know, if you're working with a vendor or you think you might be working with it, get the sales guy's contact information. Yeah. Get the information. You know, just thinking of I have a, a person, you know, here in Vermont that works for Comcast Business. And I understand, you know, he's a sales guy, right? He's not break fix. But I can be like, hey, like I get him on the phone quick. I got his cell phone number. I can text him. He's, you know. Yeah. T typically responds really quickly and be like, hey, like, I'm having this issue. Like, do you have someone in support? Or, hey, can you nudge these guys? And he was like, yep, hey, look, actually, look, I was looking at their account, you know, having those connections. And, um, you know, if you, like, meet, say, someone and say, hey, like, you know, let me, let me take you out for a cup of coffee. And then you need them for something in the future, be like, hey, I'm, I'm calling in that cup of coffee favor from, you know, two months ago when we went out to coffee at that conference. Yeah. And also what happens, like, if you're in a certain industry when um – you go to these events like continuing education and expos it builds your credibility as a professional mm -hmm. so your clients see you know if you share it share it on social media if you go you know it kind of elevates you okay like that person cares about their craft like they care enough to go to this conference keep learning new things they stay on top of like the latest everything um, and then you know you build those connections and 
even could lead potentially to career advancement opportunities. You might get offered new uh, business opportunities, partnerships, even new job. Who knows if you're looking to maybe move up to like a new position or something. So I yep. feel it's, it's like all only good benefits going there. Yeah, and, and one thing that Yolita said that just kind of reminded me of this is Oftentimes, making those personal connections will allow you to maybe get access to new features early in return for feedback. Um, you know, we. Well, that's what we're doing now, actually. Yep. We're going to be testing the couples massage online booking because up until now, it had to be done by phone only for couples or groups, but now they're going to pilot test. We're going to be um, in a see how the couple's booking online is going to be hopefully working out well for yeah. us and then they'll implement yeah. for us. Yeah. And, and one thing, you know, I just want to, we don't need to stay on this too long, but at one of our properties that we just acquired, we're using an external coin operation machine for the, the washer and dryer. And it's kind of a small company. They're based in Taiwan. They're kind of trying to break into the U.S. market. And I was like, hey, you know what? I'll give this a shot. Like, I'm an IT guy. This will be kind of cool. So I get the product, I hook it up, and I'm like, oh man, like, really wish that this would do it, if it this and that. And during the ordering process, um, his name is Fang, he lives in tai Taiwan, reached out to me on WhatsApp Business and was like, hey, you know, we're sending this to you, would love some feedback. I'm like, hey, I'll give you all the feedback I want. I'm like, hey, this is a problem that we're running into. He's like, actually, yep, here, I'm going to send you a piece of product for free to see if that fixes your issue i'm like hey actually yeah i did that was awesome like hey also this like have you guys thought about doing this integration he was like well no we haven't because we don't have anybody in the u.s that we we can test and give us I'm like hey i'll be that one to test it and give feedback mm -hmm. yeah that's great it's the it's building relationships right yeah. you know relationships are what really come into play in business and just career advancement in general yeah and that's that in person is um very very val valuable mm -hmm. well online is okay but like if i've done i've done workshops in the past like online like okay like i'll join this but then you never really like walk away with knowing um that that many much more people but also one of the other i one of the other very big benefits and points um, besides like learning about tech industry and new um, things that you could implement in your business or profession is um, inspiration and motivation. Like sometimes when we are by ourselves, we can get in the rut, just kind of, you know, getting in the comfortable, doing the same thing kind of week by week. Uh, getting just like tasks done and comfortable and all good but then we start we kind of stop seeing like the big vision or we almost lose that drive or inspiration so I feel like going to these events and being around other people that do great things at least for me it really inspires me to do better to do more um, put more energy. It's, you kind of come back with this new, like, drive almost, you know? New ideas. And the, new ideas. Yeah, the one thing that just the inspiration part that Yolita was talking about is the, the first time we went to Lithuania to, and we stayed at um, Yolita's grandmother's house, above the sink in the kitchen, there's, you know, a cabinet. And you open up the cabinet and there's kind of like a wire mesh. Mm -hmm. So you can put, you know, do your dishes or whatever, put them away in the cabinet, and then they just drip back into the sink. And I'm yeah. like, it's such a simple concept when yeah. I just say that. And I'm like, why has that, no one done that in the United States, right? Like, I've never it's not seen that used, Maybe before. there might be somewhere, but i never yeah, seen it. You know, yeah, um, I, you know, I remember, like, I can't remember, I think it was maybe in Montreal and... I was there because we were. I was helping support a new office build out, and you know, doing some technology things. And when they were hanging the cabinets in the kitchen, they were hanging them using this system called a French cleat. And if anybody is ever interested in how to hang things on a wall, using a French cleat is is actually pretty cool. And it it's an interesting concept that 
it's I'm sure it's very popular in the United States, but just when you're kind of in your own bubble here, you know, we're based in Vermont, if no one's really doing that, and that's not really how things have been done over the years, you're kind of like, oh, I'm like, such a simple concept. Why didn't I think of that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and as we touched upon also a lot already a bit earlier, also ins inspiration can come from meeting people that are like 10 levels above you already. Like, let's say if you are level one, two, to three in your business development, but then you meet someone who's already like has 100 locations or, you know, sold business, then bought another business. It, it shows you that it can be done. Like, yeah, you see these people like on YouTube or Instagram that are successful or on the news, but like when you actually meet and talk to them in person, you realize, okay, well, they followed certain steps and they're just the same person as we are. So they just learned the steps that they need to do to get where they need to go. And it's not complicated. It's just that certain people don't have certain knowledge. So you just have to have that knowledge to accomplish what you want to accomplish. Because if they've been able, why would you not be able if you learn that same information? And, and, and also execute on it. Because just knowing information but not executing it, obviously it's not going to get you where you're trying to go or make you successful alone. Yeah, and the thing that I always want to caution on this podcast is that, you know, oh, the vast majority of people, and Yulita might think differently about this comment, but the vast majority of people on YouTube or Instagram or TikTok, they're, they're, sell they're course sellers. A lot right? of you them, know? yeah. Of course they're successful people, you know, on social media. But, you know... It brings me back to an example of another conference that I was at, you know, when we were talking to um, this guy, I think he was from Chicago, and we're like, oh, we're doing this wireless build out, this, you know, company, we're going to be throwing up like, you know, 50 access points and this and that. And, you know, he was just like, oh, well, have you thought about this, this, and this? And we're like, oh, actually, no, we really haven't. And, he, and you know, he was telling us, and I was like, oh, you must, you must manage, you know, a pretty big, you know, wireless network or whatever. He's like, yeah, we've got about 30,000 <laughs> access points, you know, at our facility. And it was just interesting. It's, you know, getting information from someone that has been in the trenches, really did the work, not just someone online saying that they did the work, maybe they didn't, and they're selling you a course. You have to be very careful who yep. you listen to. And sometimes when we are desperate, like when people are desperate and I've been in that those situations myself we we want to believe like it's like a wishful thinking you want to believe that this person has like all the answers I need and like if I just purchase this course like I'm gonna be you know as successful and they say as they say like I'm gonna be but you have to realize like there is no shortcuts and um, and test People that are only educating you on doing things but are not doing it themselves, I stare away. The goal is to be wealthy, but not, you know, not appear to be wealthy. Well, a lot of people are on Instagram want to appear that they're successful, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes they get successful by faking it because yep. then they do sell these courses. But, but you know, but then you see them, they jump one thing from next thing because they ha don't have strong foundation. So they like chasing like what's hot right now. Right. Oh, like Amazon is hot right now. Let me make an Amazon course. Yep. The next thing like Shopify is hot, drop shipping. Oh, let me do the Shopify drop shipping. Yep. Now, the next time, a cryptocurrency. Okay, let me sell people on cryptocurrency. So they like, yeah, they're just like following the trends, right? To, but they never kind of pro provide that real kind of value, the strong foundation business that lasts like decade, you know, can be sold or last a decade. And the people that say, you might know me from, or you'll know me because... Typically, they haven't done whatever they're about to say, right? If someone is very maybe successful done a little bit, yeah. and well-known, 
you, you don't like you know yeah. Sacha Nudella, right? And that this is probably a very extreme example. I he doesn't know. need to tell you he's the CEO of Microsoft, mm, right? Yeah. If you're in tech, you know who he is. Right. Same thing with Steve Ballmer, you know, the world's greatest CFO. I might, might get some hate for that. But I really think Steve Ballmer is the world's greatest CFO. But anyways, you know, people that know what they're doing, they don't need to tell you that they know what they're doing. Yeah. Because they already have that street credibility. Well, I mean, they still you still want to introduce yourself, mm -hmm. you know, and it's okay if they tell you that. But, but yeah, you got to see, are they actually, like, okay, Elon Musk, for example, like, or Grant Cardone, or people like that, they uh, spent years, you know, being day-to-day -day operations, building businesses, building... Um, whatever they're building and learning like s s for example Grant Cardone like spent years traveling doing like sales workshops you know for cars people so he got really good at sales so now he sells you know sales university and but you know but he's doing it because he actually does know what he's talking about he just didn't come up with the course out of nowhere he came up from years of experience actually like traveling the states and doing all these sales trainings and workshops and and selling you know product products himself mm -hmm. um and you know or like elon musk you know i would take advice on business from him because obviously i mean while he almost bankrupted uh he did uh build a lot of he rebounds every time and he build you know a lot of value in the world and successful companies or he bought you know and then build them um so it's like see what people do versus what they are just like saying or thinking make wanting you to think that they're better than they are yeah and the other thing too when you're at conferences or networking events is you can get you know valuable insights into market trends or how customers interact or you know challenges that a customer yeah, might be. Yeah, and you can meet customers and, too. Yeah, in different parts of the United States or, or world or etc. And you know one thing that um, you know Ohio is um, an interesting um, segment because it's considered very quintessential America, right? So, and what, what I mean by that is it's a lot of times like fast food restaurants use it as a test bed to test new products. It's kind of like, okay, if, if it kind of works in the Ohio market, which is kind of quintessential America, it's probably going to work in the rest of the, the, the United States. That, that might not be true with every product, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, for instance, there's a McDonald's in Ohio. I think it's one of maybe two in the United States that still serves pizza right hmm, on their menu wow. i would want to try and, and it's McDonald's. interesting you know people that live in some of these test markets have a very unique perspective on market trends right you know people that live in detroit for instance uh maybe not so much anymore but you know when detroit was really the heart of the american automobile industry that yeah. was a test market right you would be driving around and you would see concept vehicles. Well, San Francisco is a test totally. market for electric vehicles. Yep. You know, New York City, you know, is test, um, you know, for a lot of different IT products because there's so many people. Uh, but, you know, getting those market trends and insights from other areas can be inv invaluable. I actually uh, rode an uh, electric taxi mm. in Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah, they have the test, uh, like the new self-driving ones. Pretty mm. cool. I was at a tech conference once, um, and, you know, um, it was a HPE Aruba conference, and Partha, who's the, I think he's CEO or CTO, but, you know, very high level, he was like, we're running this whole event on HPE hardware with the latest nightly build of the code. And he's like, I guess we'll see how that goes. And, you know, halfway through their keynote presentation, it was it was kind of funny. And there's a bunch of tech people there. But, like, something happened with the Wi-Fi. They were ran into, like, a bug. And he was like, well, I guess that's what happens when you're on the bleeding edge. 
Yeah, the other thing about going to conferences and networking events is recruitment opportunities. So while you could, like if you're an employee, you might get, um, you know, connections with company that you might want to get a job at, but also for employers, you can meet people you could employ in the future. Maybe they would want to switch jobs. And as a growing company, you will obviously need to hire more people. So it's great to build those connections as well of certain professionals that you might want to hire in the future. Yeah, and you're getting direct access to recruiters as well. Um, if you are looking to hop or maybe get into a new industry, um, when I was at DEF CON a couple of years ago, um, the Digital Defense Department, which is kind of the U.S. government's um, anti-cyber warfare department, I'm not exactly sure how you, you know, but their recruiters were there and they were recruiting heavily. And, you know, it was to the point where they're like, hey, can you get on a call this afternoon and meet some of the the team in Virginia and I was like, yeah, I don't know about that. But yeah. you know, there but you know, getting exchanging cards and you know, I can't remember what the young lady's name was, but you know, she reached out a couple of times after that and was, you know, really trying to recruit people just, you know, heavily in general. And maybe it wasn't a good time at that time, but who knows, maybe in the future. Yeah, it's good to um, network, you know, and build that uh, community as well of this in the same industry um never know you never know when you're gonna need it um yeah and and you get you know so overall many benefits you get market intelligence you also get a personal branding inspiration career advancement exposure to new technologies skill development tools knowledge so also, just, you know, networking with other people in your industry can be huge. And, you know, from the technology industry, sometimes if you're kind of just banging your head up against the wall because, you know, you just can't figure out an issue, it's really nice having a network of, you know, some other handful of people that maybe work in a similar industry or maybe work in different industries. It's like, hey, like, you know... I do that a lot with people that I've met at conferences, you know, we ping each other every now and then. Now it's more on LinkedIn, but it's like, hey, like, have you guys seen this? What or, do you do with yeah, this? Yeah, or hey, like, um, especially with people overseas, um, you know, typically they're like, hey, have you guys kind of seen this like emerging ransomware like in the United States? And we're like, oh, hey, no, like, first we're hearing about it. Like, what do you, what are you guys seeing? Like, share what you have and they're like yeah hey sure here look this is what we're seeing and sometimes that can be the difference of a client getting um encrypted and a client maybe not getting encrypted yeah. you know those personal yeah. relationships you become better as professional mm -hmm. for your clients and also um you know if you um like when i mentioned when you meet people that maybe are several steps or many steps ahead of you you, you can ask them, hey, what did you do when you were in this level or when you came across this hurdle? Like who did, which maybe a software provider did you use to overcome this issue? Or like, who did you hire to solve this? You know, which like vendor or- What law firm did yes, you use? Yes, like, so people are willing to share their contacts as well. And just being able to get, you know, some advice where you're like, hey, I've been thinking about doing this. And someone that has maybe tried that three or four different times, like, whoa, 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 hold on a second. We tried that a couple of different times. And you know what? It just didn't work for us because of X, Y, and Z. Maybe it just wasn't the right strategy for the market that they were in. But, you know, that could potentially save you thousands or tens of thousands of dollars by, you know, getting some of that insight from other people in your industry or yeah. outside of your industry. Yeah, exactly. So I think that, you know, obviously, if you one word of caution, like just going to conferences alone is not going to make you successful either. Like, OK, you might be if you don't put the work in once you come back from them and you don't implement what you learn and you don't put effort, much effort, you're just like wandering there, wasting time, just like, you know, eating snacks and you're not paying attention. 
then no, like don't go. But like if you are going to implement what you learn, and most likely you will because you will be inspired and the, the, the energy is going to rub off from other people too. And then, you know, I at least I'm a competitive person a little bit. So I get also that a little competitive edge like, oh, like they're doing this. Like I want to do it too or do it even better than they're doing, you know. So um, that can um, help too. Yeah. And to go back to what I first said, you know, when we were talking about this is conferences are what you make of them. Yeah. And, you know. The when I've gone to a conference and someone was like, hey, have you been here before? Like, is this your first time at this conference? I'm like, oh, no, I've, I've been coming for years or whatever. And they're like, well, what's like the secret? And I'm like, well, don't think that you're just going to see everything because that, that's not possible, right? You're going to miss stuff. And, and that's okay, right? You know, and um, like uh, DEF CON just popped back into my head because it can be very overwhelming, you know, for people. And I always tell people, you know, pick pick three or four different keynote speakers that you want to see and go and see those. Do one or two things on the scavenger hunt. Make sure you go and meet vendors. And that's that's kind of your base, right? That's way more than what you can see during the whole conference. Yeah, go with the goal. Yeah. Like, okay, I want to meet loose this goal. and this. A yeah. Loose goal. Or I want to acquire a relationship with specifically yeah. like this software a point of sale i need to find someone or i need a broker i need a salesperson yep and then you go and meet those different one and pick the one you like the best because you get to meet them in person like they have the booths yep. so the other thing like which i can't yet speak a lot on but we might be able to speak on that later on doing a booth at these shows because i considered it and we are considering to do one in new jersey in january strongly we are pretty committed actually to do it and see how that goes and that's on a new jersey new york state we're registering now in new york as well to be able to sell franchises there so um that's mixed reviews as well like some people say oh this was the greatest expo we had we got a lot of leads we got you know a lot of people interested in our product or in our service mm -hmm. and then some vendors you talk to they say oh this was like a waste of money like the leads were not good quality yeah. like this well not again worth it you know just showing up and spending you know 10 20 30 40 even hundreds of thousands of dollars on a booth that that that's just that's like step zero, right? You know, you gotta have you gotta work the crowd too. Yeah, and you know, depending on what industry you're in, you know, I've kind of seen it on both spectrums. You know, um, going in and spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on a booth. Well, usually you know? it's five thousand to ten thousand. Going but more as a participant, more. and then you know, being more you know, spearheaded about who you want to work with, you know, so if you're like, you know what, if I could get time with these five companies or these five people, you know, that would be, that would take my business to the next level. Well, you know what, maybe instead of doing a booth at that conference, say, okay, you know, we're well, going to spend, walk the conference. we're going to spend 50 grand, right, for this booth, just as an example. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're hoping that these 10 people well i don't know if it's and that much yeah you can use the numbers however you <laughs> okay. want the concept which conference true. which expo wants you to pay fifty thousand to so showcase? where i'm going with this okay. is you can either spend the money on the booth or take that money and then say you know what i really want to meet these 10 people right or these 10 businesses reach out and be like you know what i am going to spend in your head, $5,000 to wine and dine these people, right? I'm going to take them out to a really nice restaurant. I'm going to get a captive audience, you know. Look at that risk reward of, you know, do you want to be a booth and try to just get as much traffic as you can and try to attract the right people? And, and maybe that works for your industry, right? You know, this is... Well, those are cold leads. Right. Like, or yeah. do you really want to take that money that you would have otherwise spent on a on a booth and maybe really target 
five whales. But I so guess how would you target if you don't you don't if mm -hmm. you don't know their contact? Like yep. if that's so, the thing. Yep. You know? So there's plenty of tools out there. If you would like, I have a consulting company that can help you with those okay. tools. But, you know, there's plenty of tools out there that can do, um, you know, drip campaigns, help you get contact information for certain people in that certain company. And then reaching out, right, doing the drip campaigns, getting to try to get in front of those people as much as you can. Maybe that you do that in conjunction with having a booth. Right. Yeah, well, sometimes you see because these people, like the owners, like for example, I we get so many people trying to sell us stuff all the time, mm -hmm. and they'll like call you and email you multiple times, like cold leads, like we don't know who they are, they try to sell us stuff. Mm -hmm. We ignore them, like most of the time, like most likely they're, n you know, I rarely, I never bought anything like that, that someone usually called me just out of the blue. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, on occasion, actually, I hired carpet cleaning guy the other week. He just walked in asking if we needed carpet cleaning. We, mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, yeah, actually, we do have one location that we do need it. I was just thinking to call someone. Mm -hmm. So that was right timing, and it was called lead. I didn't know. I hired him on the spot. But, but most of the time when someone calls us, like, we just say, no, we're good, like, or we already have one. Or, okay, like, maybe send us, we'll review it. Mm -hmm. But it's, like, difficult. I guess one thing about Booth that you could have them come to it and then you could uh, warm up the lead, so to speak, and then, you know, you could... Um, yep. Or, you know, I have, you know, sometimes cold emails or cold calls come at the right time. Yeah, it has right? to be the right time. You yeah. know, so that's where it's like sometimes you got to kind of not be a pass. It's a numbers game. But, right, you know. The more you call, the more yeah. likely you might have crossed to the one you that know, needs your service that time. Um, yeah. You know, when Apple AirPods were coming out, they were very popular, right? A, a vendor sent me a pair of airpods kind of out of the blue I'm, honestly i'm not really sure how they even got my my address but they, they got it and you know what i opened it up and i was like oh wow like this is pretty cool and it was like hey like you know can we steal 15 minutes of your time felt a little obligated um you know but i was like you know what hey like you know the hundred bucks they spent, that's kind of cool that's 200 you know but it was kind of nice and you know what i did i did a I think it was like a 15, 20 minute call and we were kind of like, you know what, this just doesn't seem like a good fit. The product wasn't kind of what we were looking for at the time. But, you know, they got me on the phone, right? Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it does work. Sometimes it does work like um, phone cold calls still do work, but it has to be a numbers game. You yep. have to be committed to mm -hmm. it. And... Um, or just make you know how to target right, yep. you know, just find the right. Or say you've been thinking about to. buying an air fryer for a while, and a company says, "Hey, hop on a call for fifteen minutes, and we'll send you an air fryer." I'm like, "Were they reading I my mind?" I do not approve of air fryer, though. <laughs> but you know but, the concept. Yeah. The concept. But you right, wanted it. You yeah. know the concept yeah. is you know if you can spend a couple hundred bucks to get like a decision maker on the phone. That's a couple hundred well, bucks. Well, it's the well cost spent. of acquisition yep. and call, you know, because you pay cost for ads or Google yep. ads. So everything, you know, there's really no free lead, so to speak, unless no. someone like refers their friend to you and that's almost like a free lead. But you still paid in some way to acquire that first lead, yep. most likely. And, you know, just that brought up something uh, a longtime client. Of, of ours um, referred us to actually another business in the same building as them and they kind of called out of the blue and I was talking to them and I'm like oh hey like just curious how, how did you get our info and they're like oh so-and-so next door um, you know we asked them and they recommended you folks and I'm like oh hey that's awesome and those are the best type of referrals because the person's in the market because they're asking for who they can call they're getting a referral and I was like, hey, like, you know, just to let you know, like, you know, I'm happy to connect you with some of our other clients if you want, you know, um, a, you know, references and the individual. They were like, you know what, the glowing review that we got of you folks from so-and-so 
we don't need to talk to anybody else. Yeah. And I'm like thinking in my head, okay, I don't want to get too excited, but we've probably won this contract, you know. Yeah, I keep yawning because yesterday we had a staff party and I went to sleep late because I was organizing, so I apologize for that. But I think we had good episode 15. Yep. And we will see you next episode in July already. Hope everyone having is going to have a nice July 4th. Stay safe out there. Don't get too crazy. Stay safe. Stay hydrated. Don't drink and drive. Uh, or don't drink alcohol at all. We don't drink alcohol anymore. Nope. We're too old. <laughs> I don't know if I'd say we're too old for it. But, the you know, the, the market as to wrap up this call, but the market for alcohol consumption in the United States is, 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 is trending downward. That's why, like, I actually just saw, um, it was an ad or whatever, I, Mountain Dew is doing hard Mountain Dew now. Oh. Like a 5% alcohol hmm. Mountain Dew, and I'm just like, Mountain Dew is kind of gross to begin with. No oh offense if you like it. But I'm, I'm just like, look, like everybody, it's kind of like the automotive industry. Yeah. It's like the beverage industry now is like, how do we reinvent ourselves? Well, they reinvent with non-alcoholic yeah. cocktails now. There's yep. a lot of cocktails at the restaurants more and more. It used to be not like... Not that many. Now almost yeah. every restaurant offers like a virgin version, you know. Yeah. Of it's coffee. actually interesting. I and remember. it's still though fifteen dollars. Yeah. But, the yeah. last time we were in Lithuania, you know, you look at a menu for at a restaurant, and the vast majority of the options are non-alcoholic. With a or drinks. With a small list of alcoholic drinks, which is funny because it's the complete opposite of the United States, yeah. where everything. On the menu, you know, it's heavy alcohol and then a very few small amount of yeah. non-alcoholic alcohol. Yeah, it's not that many besides sodas. Like, U.S. Yeah. is really big on sodas. Like, if we go to Europe, they have more, like, you know, fruit juices. compote, yeah. lemonade, fresh juice, bottled juice, mineral water, different teas, uh, the jelly drink, like the, they call kissel, you know, uh, also quass, like the fermented bread drink, which it's, is... It's gross, don't try it. No, I love it, it's good. <laughs> Sometimes it does have a tiny bit of alcohol. It's kind of like kombucha, but like very small amount of right. alcohol in it. But it's pretty good, um, right? Great, well, episode 15 wrapped up. See and, you folks yeah, on the next let's one. Let's subscribe and we'll see you um, in July. Have a brilliant day. And get in touch with us if you're looking for massage, spa business, or IT services right here.